before we get into it, I just want to thank our new channel members and patrons, Kodiak and Rockseeker. So thank you so much for your support. And don't forget to use my Star Citizen referral code to sign up to Star Citizen. Thank you. What's up, everyone? It's Baron. What's up, chickies? It's Space Jesus. And we got Lee back again. What's up, guys? It's What's me, up, Lee. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, um, we're doing our deep dive on the Orion today, and we've got our T16,000 giveaway, so don't forget to put hashtag sticks in there, join the Discord, do all the stuff for the channel. So, what do you what do you two think about the Orion? Well, I mean, this is the heavy miner. I mean, if you're looking for the top tier, this is it. And, you know, CIG has even said, this is the largest mining ship in Star Citizen. And not only that, it's the largest... Uh, civilian industrial ship by RSI. So, yeah, this is it. Like this will is your be. end game. What do you yeah, think? And it likely will be for sure. It likely will be the biggest one they make. Yeah, in the video I just watched before, they said it's going to be the largest mining vessel. So, whether or not they change that statement, I don't know. But it, I don't think it would be something that would make something bigger. So, like the yeah. size like of the it's an ATM machine. I mean, I'm thinking about naming mine the Fort Knox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, my God. We, we were calculating earlier, even at about 7,000 SEU average at 19,000 SEU, it was 150 million bucks just about to fill this ship up. Yeah. And that's that's assuming you didn't do a higher value or, you know, that's just averaging, what was it, 70, 72? I yeah. think we came up with for SEU, 7,200 or something like that. It was, it was right at 150 million UEC per so, load. Going off of that, I don't know if a lot of people are familiar with this vessel, but we'll be giving you quite a bit of detail, obviously, today. But um, with this vessel, we all know it's very hard to um, maneuver as well, so that's why it's got its two tractor beams to pull asteroids to it. So uh, being in an asteroid field, hopefully those tractor beams, and you might even use an SRV to move asteroids out of the way as you navigate through them but they have described it to be able to eat an entire asteroid field and mine. Strip mining, baby. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> and um, like Space was saying as well, uh, with the ore in those little containers at the back, those four box, those 12 boxes that spin, you can actually individually uh, itemize where you want ore to go to which one. And so if you want to dedicate two or three to a particular ore and then have the rest just for random ore, that's completely doable as well as um i don't think there will be any inert material up on board i think that'll just all no, be gone it's all pure ore yeah it, it's it refines all the dirt you can be selective about what you want to mine you can discard certain things other than dirt or keep it all or discriminate to only one or two kinds of ore or whatever i mean it's very very cool it's very flexible it's definitely going to have the most control out of any mining vessel that's out there or is going to be out there. Oh, I mean, yeah. not a lot of people even know that it had track. It has tractor beams and drones. Yeah. Yeah. It How does that could affect it. I noticed that as well. Um, I was looking at it and I'd seen drones pop up. I was like, what? This has drones? I think it has six or eight drones. I'm not sure. I can't remember which. I think it's, I think it's six, though. We don't know exactly what they'll do because we don't know what drones will do, but... Uh, well, I mean, just like, uh, you know, Baron was saying about the SRV moving asteroids, this could very well do the same thing. Maybe it, like, brings, you know, little chunks of asteroid to the Orion for it to munch on. Actually, yeah. if you... Or look, could you use it for scanning or whatever. If you yeah. have the original um, Orion unveiling page, there's actually... So you actually have the, you know, the original one um, for yeah. maintenance... Um, just like what you would have on the Vulcan. And then there's another one. Uh, what's this one? It looks like it's more of a derelict. It's more of a used one, but it looks to be more used to the point it says to actually replace components on a vessel. And it actually yeah. looks like it can change its... Well, you know what I think it is? I think this little thing's going to go out there and uh, replace like maybe mining heads or... Uh, put attachments on the mining heads you know how we have that today with the mole you know this could yeah. very well change out your mining heads in deep space because you know you're not going to want to go all the way back to a station to do that 
Yeah, well, true. It literally true. says that uh, small arm extends for increased functionality, including tool bit replacement and swapping. Yeah, and it's a pretty sizable drone too. If you look at it compared to um, the guy standing next to it for scale, and I'm sure you can post this when we're talking about it. It's called the uh, the maintenance mining drone, and it's twice two and a half times the size of a person. Yeah, I just seen that. I was like, I seen that. I was like, what is that? <laughs> So, as well as that, if a lot of people are questioning why or whether or not they should have an Orion, if you are a miner and you want to make some cash, the Orion will be the ship to you. But uh, for you, but obviously you might have to have some form of uh, escort for it because it's going to be incredibly difficult to maneuver. And it only has like I think it's two size fives on it to defend itself, and they're dual mounts though. But again. You're going to need something more than just a couple of turrets to actually defend yourself. Um, so yeah, like I said, those 12 rotating cubes will store individual refined ore in each cube, as well as it's got, it did have just over 16,000 of SCU, but as Space has mentioned before, I, I've tried to find, I couldn't find it, but it may hold more now because that was on the old metric of the ship of when it was 170 meters, which is now 340? 340 yeah doubled in size yeah so being now that it's like it's bigger than the idris isn't it yeah it's 100 meters uh, bigger. It's, crazy, isn't it? it's that's insane to like have an idris pull up next to this mining vessel which is much much bigger but um so you know like they, they've said in one of their videos this will actually happily eat through a whole asteroid fields um you know whether or not there'll be something else other than an asteroid field like much much bigger denser rocks uh, it's also mentioned that you could have missiles on this as well to split the rock and actually um, I think space what was it to observe the uh, if there's gas pockets yeah so the way it'll work is you'll you'll actually have to decide what point to aim at a large asteroid you'll fire this missile and it penetrates the uh, asteroid and it and it scans the asteroid looking for gas pockets looking for deposits densities everything else and it sends that information back to the orion so that you can determine where you want to start breaking up the rock because you, you don't want to hit a gas pocket i mean keep in mind that we're talking about asteroids the size of spaceships we're, we're talking about a piece of rock the size of a of a uh you know an avenger or a valkyrie or god knows what uh so their gas pockets are all kinds of stuff involved and it's it's designed to measure those things and tell you you know where to cut or, or or where to penetrate the rock and where not to and and that kind of stuff to ideally i guess cut the rock up and then process smaller pieces of it yeah so um talking about cutting up the rock as well you got those so you've got like a lot of components at the front of it as well you've got your mining lasers you got your mining um mining laser you got your tractor beam and you got the munches as well so I, i'm guessing when you split the rock up with your mining laser you will then suck it in with the tractor beams and crunch and process and see what's in that uh or um as well as when we size of the lights. <laughs> did you yeah. see the size of the lights on the front of it they look the same as the um the reclaimer but much much bigger yeah and i th i think they are man if you look at it in scale it looks like that set of lights is the size of a vanguard or something oh man I mean, it's, it's ridiculous how big the ship is yeah, this is the old model it might get a lot bigger yeah absolutely absolutely 100%. Yeah, it probably yeah, sorry it probably is gonna get a lot bigger yeah <laughs> no cig um so I mean, this this might be javelin sized at some point oh god it could be <laughs> Could I mean, you imagine? And then the like the storage capacity of it as it well. It might have to be. Well, watching the old video, they actually, when they were talking about when they upscaled it from 170 to 340, is the fact that they didn't actually have enough room to compensate for the crew members, as well as the cargo, which was kind of yeah. odd, because I think there's a maximum positions of eight on this vessel. Um, yeah. So. Going from the original concept, like we've said, it was 170 to 340. If you want to get this vessel, it's going to be a lot of ship to get out into space. And whether or not you're going to be able to, you won't be able to go planet side, you won't be able to go into orbit, I wouldn't say, because you'll just get sucked in. Um, 
as well as when we went over our hull D and E video, we did mention that the hull D will be a perfect complement for the Orion. Again, you can use the hull E, um, you'll probably be able to hold three or four times more ore. So space saying that you'll make around 150 million UEC, I think it was it per 19,000? Yeah. If, if we assume that it's got, and the 19,000 came from uh, something that I actually saw, whether it was a video or an article, I can't remember. Um, but I did actually see it with my own eyes and, uh, it's been months ago to be fair, but I want to say it was a very, very old video and it was just in a, you know, a 30 second piece within a, a two hour long video or something. And that's the only time that I've ever seen any devi deviation from the 16,000. Yeah. Um, and they were actually talking about the difference between the 170 meter size and the 340 meter size. And they were saying that the, you know, the, uh, obviously the ship got bigger, the cargo had increased, and it was now slated to be, I think was the word they put, uh, at nineteen thousand. So theoretically, they doubled the size of the ship. They were at sixteen thousand. What if it came out at thirty-two thousand, or twenty-five thousand, or twenty-six thousand? But I'm just basing it on the nineteen thousand that, at least I think I know that they've committed to do. You know, and everything they commit to do, they could change. And of course, I could always be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> But if that's true then yeah we, we took an example at um i think it was about seven thousand or seventy seventy one hundred or whatever it was uh uec on average per um uh cargo unit at nineteen thousand. we came up with uh, i think it was 148 million and change <laughs> so if you were to have a whole e and you filled that whole e you'd be probably just over 600 million uec worth of all there but again and that, that doesn't even count for a high value ore i mean what if you're making double that or triple that or quadruple that you know per seu but then yeah that, quantanium oh my god yeah if you did quantanium because <laughs> this thing is supposed to be able to uh, stabilize it yeah yeah it has a built-in refinery as well yeah. yeah so for those now as well mining quantanium in your prospector or mole and you have i think it's about 10 minutes or so i'm no. Uh, about 20 minutes from the time you put it in your ship so given that that you'll you know you have that time frame now where you have to get back and quickly get it off your vessel to refine it you won't have to do that with the orion it will just stabilize it and refine it for you and it will be there as an end product so as space has no what's that with no with no dirt yeah no dirt at all no dirt. so it's gonna be like just all or so um going off what space has said in the past with the, um, like the the ore on this and the processes that this is going to have in place it's going to be a massive money maker but again like with your hull e there in mind you're going to have a you're probably going to have to have a bit of a an escort to go with that vessel depending on whatever you want to take with it but again you're going to have to protect it in some uh, fashion or another now like a not mention this but there's not a lot of info on this ship um there is a little bit of info from when they've done some of their um in the verse videos i try to watch everything i try and look for q and a's all the information i can on this uh space is pretty well as we all know very knowledgeable on a lot of ships um there are is a little bit on the internals um and how you know the internals are actually built around well the whole vessel is actually built around the um the ore funnel which goes from the front of the vessel from when you're mining to the very back to the actual refinery itself and storage components. So <laughs> conveyor belt, I think. Yeah, it's it's sort of like in a a housing, as you would say, because yeah. yeah. Um going from the mining specialist as well, you got of quite a few roles. You got uh, obviously you would have the pilot, you have a scanner operator, you have a beam operator, you have an exothermic detector you have a laser uh, seismometer you have an analytical materials processor you have a cargo operator and a refinery operator so obviously all going to be critical roles but they also specify and i found this very surprising because this opens up an argument for a lot of different um, aspects on star citizen itself so if you were to take this information that i'm about to tell you at face value or you were to interpret as something else 
that's great. Build on it. Let us know down in the comments what you think about this piece of information that I'm about to tell you. And this is just a note. So it also states that you can have real players as your crew that you will be able to run the vessel with or you will be able to run the crew with NPCs, which will be something a lot of people may do. So to put it into terms, what it says is, um, so as previously noted, one of the basic objectives in the design of the various occupations is breaking down large complicated uh, endeavors into a number of smaller jobs, each of which can test a dedicated player's metal um, in unique and interesting ways. This encourages business but does not force players to act in concert with one another. To accomplish, to accomplish larger tasks, as you'll always have the option of simply doing it all yourself. However, inefficient that might be, or more likely, simply hiring NPC crew members to work alongside you, there's a lot of thought and effort going into hiring, evolution, simulation of uh, motivations and evaluation of such npc crew members but that's a topic left for another discussion so that also says there should be a thread out there somewhere telling us about npc behaviors and how they're gonna uh mo like be motivated and just their different aspects of evolution through a game so if you've ever played truck simulator and you see that um the npcs in that have the AI have different um, strengths in hauling particular cargo. That's what this may be like, but obviously much, much more advanced. Yeah, I mean, with just like any ship, especially capital, you know, you, unless you just have a ridiculously active and huge sized organization, with these larger ships, the normal person is going to need, you know, some dedicated friends, some NPCs, and hell, even some AI blades for maybe a couple of the turrets, you know? Oh, yeah. Whatever. I think the biggest takeaway that I got out of that statement was, it says, this encourages but does not force players to act in concert with one another to accomplish larger tasks, as you'll always have the option of simply doing it all yourself. Mm-hmm. However inefficient that may be, or more likely simply hiring NPCs, etc. Basically telling you it's going to be harder. <laughs> well, but what I take away from it is there is some means to be able to, if you're, if you're crazy enough, oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you got the gonads to do it, you can hop in an Orion. You can find yourself a nice little spot in the middle of nowhere that nobody will ever find you. And you can just sit there and, and make bank. Um, I don't know that I would do it myself. I, I've we talked about it before. I, I could easily see at least two or three humans um, on a ship like this at a minimum, and then and add a couple of NPCs, a few NPCs. But a couple of those positions, you're going to have to have a human doing it. If you don't do it yourself, you're going to have to have a, a human player out there to help you. Yeah. Um, I would think just because of the nature of what it is, I would want to make damn sure they're not filling it up with something cheap. So going off what Spacer just said as well as um, talking about possibly having other players because it would be a good experience as well with other players with the amount that you would probably make if you had a hull e or d uh you give them a 10 percent cut maybe 15 it, it depends on what you guys want to come up with use you, you're still going to make a lot of money you're still going to make a profit that is going to be worth going out there with other players is there's always going to be you know there's always going to be a couple of ifs ands or buts but if you can get someone else with another hull e again and then maybe give that person with a hull e a bit more of a percentage you're still going to make a lot a lot of money so saying that think about the possibilities if you have a jab if you're a javelin owner such as lee you could make a lot of money within, you know, a week or a couple of days and you could go and explore on your javelin and do as you please. Yeah, well, like you're saying, you know, it, it probably is going to take like a week or even longer. You know, when you decide to take this vessel out and to fill it up with cargo, you are going to be out there a while somewhere deep in space, probably unprotected. And you know, it's going to take some time. You, you've got to, you know, set time out for this. And if you're bringing friends along, you need to organize it. I think the 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 thing that I noticed in the video, and, and Baron, you watched it earlier tonight. The, the thing that I noticed in the video was they're putting a lot of effort into the crew accommodations. Mm, yeah. And 
interiors and the the recreational areas and all the ship I, I see this ship as the nostromo it's that ship that's designed to go out into space for years potentially at a time now in our time frame in the game we're not talking years we may be talking weeks <laughs> who knows but the ship is designed to go out for extended periods of time across extreme distances do the work it's designed to do and then either come back and offload or offload directly onto a cargo ship such as a d or an e and keep going right back at it so the person that's really committed to mining if you really enjoy mining this is a way your ass ain't never got to get back on a space station again if you don't want to <laughs> you could take off mm. and theoretically never come off that ship until you get ready to you just keep offloading your cargo and you just keep mining now I'm, i love mining I'm, I, I made a lot of money mining and I, I got really good at it. So, I, you know, I've got one of these and I, I'll be honest, the very first thing I do is organize a mining party to go out and make enough money to get everybody armor and weapons and equipment and components and everything else before we even think about doing anything else. There's a few of us that have them. And that's, that's a game plan. Just put a crew up in a ship, have somebody going from ship to ship and unloading and just keep going until we get tired of mining and, and we got a few billion in the bank and then we can just pretty much go do whatever we want to do but everybody be like will be equipped to do so hell yeah oh yeah. i can't wait till this is a possibility so yeah, no lie, right? and the, the crazy thing is when that video was released as well if you paid a little bit of attention to the towards the end they were in white box and they're actually on their way they were just about to hit gray box so whether or not this ship's actually finished or not is completely up to CIG, uh, as well as we know now that server meshing should be here about quarter one, quarter two next year, and we should have Pyro about quarter three, quarter four, which is really exciting. I'm so excited. Um, but going into this as well, uh, I th just a second, I think it's probably been reconcepted since that video. Yeah. Um, for a number of reasons, I think the ship metrics probably changed, and they realized, okay. We can either reconcept this <clears throat> or we can um, try to make this work and make it bigger. And I don't think they wanted to make it any bigger. So I think they took the, the concept they had, reconcepted it with the new matrix in it, which could change the cargo, it could change a number of things. Um, but I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure that they probably kept certain aspects of it, but they've, they're de definitely going to reconcept it now. Yeah, it definitely would make sense. I mean, like... <sighs> Look at the Merchant Man. We use the Merchant Man as an example that everyone was expecting the, the shape that it had and they just came out and completely blew our mind with the shape. And, you know, I mean, I, I think what we'll see is a trend toward that. I think the Merchant Man was our first hint of, hey, wait a minute, this is what it's really going to be as we progress in the game when we start reconcepting these ships. This is how much different they are now as opposed to what they were when we were reconcept when we were concepting them originally we've come this far in our technology and in our knowledge and everything else this is a standard that we're going to have in place when we make ships from now i just hope that the, the merchant man sets a precedence i've said it before i hope it sets a precedence of the amount of detail we can expect in the game yeah yeah it's what they did with the merchant man uh, hopefully they go back to older ships uh, even like the yeah. Constellation or um, the 600i, like they're doing a rework on and just completely blow our minds with what they want to do with them. But uh, I think they have well, to. I do. I think they have to. Yeah. Well, especially with older concepts, you know, especially the Rhine, you know, it was what, 2015? Yeah. When that was concepted. That's very out of date. Yeah. Um, February, March of 2015. It's going to be, it's going to look like a completely different ship. Yeah, I think so too. Oh, yeah. God. So, a lot bigger. <laughs> yeah. So, going, I'll go over the components, but these could be relative to the 170 meter um, mark again. Like what they're <laughs> throwing stuff up against the wall. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. It's like looking at how they updated the cargo mass for the Merchant Man, but they haven't updated like the weight, they haven't updated the metrics, nothing. This could completely be wrong so the radar is large computer is medium which is kind of strange um they got a capital power plant large coolers large shield generators large uh, fuel intakes and tanks large quantum drive a large jump module and a capital quantum fuel tank which is 
which is really good. Uh, like I said before, you got two size 5 dual mount turrets, which are remote. You have two size 3 tractor beams and you have two size 4 mining lasers. So now that we know that they've added uh, mining modules as well that you can attach to, um, to an asteroid or a rock, I wonder if they will be applicable to something like the Orion or even the, look, the mining sub modules. Well, yeah, uh, that's one of the things the drones could do. They just attach one of those to one of their arms and go out there and stick it to a asteroid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's out of mining too. I think we're used to using a laser cutter to actually cut into a rock, and I think what we'll find is that these ro these lasers are going to be used to cut the rocks up into smaller pieces, which are then fed into those jaws, yeah. and those jaw th those jaws actually eat through the rock. And there's some kind of mechanism that sucks the debris up into the ship along that conveyor belt tube and it gets processes sorted and separated in that. And then it's an automated process to actually put it in storage somewhere. So it'll be a completely different process of mining than we're accustomed to now. Yeah. Um, well, I don't think we'll, we'll actually be using like a, um, a, a mining head, so to speak, as opposed to some kind of laser that actually cuts the rocks up into smaller pieces. Yeah, so we, it says here, uh, precise, precision laser cutter on telescope array. So like you were saying, it's going to be yeah, used to cut up that rock to actually be able to fed through those jaw, uh, the, the grinders. Now, speaking of those grinders, I am in the industry of drilling, and I've been in drilling for quite a few years now. Now... Those grinders that they're using look like a trichome setup for a drill head. And I'll try and find an image to put up for you. Now, a trichome of that size would be stupidly expensive. Just getting one for a small drill and doing as we need cost about six or seven thousand dollars. And that's got tungsten um, and it's designed to go through hard rock. It's designed to go through broken ground. But... One could only imagine the size and the cost of components and parts for one of these ships. Yeah, and I, and I was going to say something a while ago. I think all the components are going to go to capital. Just, yeah. Just because of the size of the ship. I Definitely. think it's easy to say that every component on that ship will be a capital component. And there may be multiples of those components, depending on you know what it is. But yeah, I mean, can you imagine just the size? Can you imagine trying to fit... <laughs> One of one of those bits on to the ship. What would it, what would it take? It'd take a couple of SRVs to get it in place and and mount it. You know, will we have to do all that? I don't know. That might be one of the things where you have to go to a dry dock to. to yeah, do. yeah, I could see that too. Absolutely. But, yeah, I, it's a good point. I, this I don't know what about I don't know about this um this drone. It says it's supposed to change out uh, bits, but I don't know if we'll be able to change that one out. That like. They, they haven't specified, but again, um, it could be something to think about because the cost of some of the components on this ship and, like, yeah, some of the parts is going to be redonkulous. But again, you're going to have to go out. If you take that ship out, you're going to have to go out for long periods of time and make it profitable. Yeah, it's not going to be a ship that you take out with a few hours of gameplay and you come back with $150 million. It's not going to work that way. I, I don't think I, I could be wrong. I, I say it all the time. I could be wrong, but look at the time it takes to process a prospector's worth or a mole's worth of mining. Yeah. Um, and the way we do that, I mean, you could be out on a mole for a couple of hours before you fill it up, unless you get really, really lucky and you, you, you find a couple of big fields and you can get it done quick. You're fully crude. But I, I used to solo mine all the time. There's nothing for me to be out there for a couple of hours. I was more worried about 30 K than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god how good is it now that they've actually brought in that oh, function big relief <laughs> yeah <sighs> and it just, it just that just goes to show us too that the game we're playing now or the tech demo i call it that we're playing now has no resemblance at all in any way shape or form to what the game is going to be when it actually comes out i mean it's going to be a completely different experience than we have now there won't be 30ks there won't be all the issues that we have um at least i'd like to think that way you know, well, it shouldn't be damaged yeah. by them by the way they're implementing exactly. updates. So, I feel uh, we've covered as much as we need to cover on this. Like it's, 
Its current mass is 27 million kilos, so just think about in comparison. This is a, uh, it's a time limited sale, even though it is capital. So if you want to get one, I would buy one, put in the buybacks like we've mentioned in the past. And if you want it back uh, when it's released, go for it. But I feel, yeah, you know, we're not, we're not, he's coming up. <laughs> yeah, we're not salesmen or anything. We're not, what's that space? You can always buy it in game. That, it. Yeah. It's going to take you a year. <laughs> yeah. probably to buy one in game if you're on it even a medium sized ship Any, anything yeah. a small ship or medium sized ship with the earning capacity of that ship it's, it's going to take you an extremely long period of time to buy the ship in game there's probably uh, people that enjoy that though oh, you know, yeah, that yeah. long grind to get you know that one ship you know <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not discounting it at all I'm just I'm warning <clears throat> I'm warning people this is not something you're going to go grind for in a month it's not it's going to take you a long time um I, I would say that th this could theoretically, by the time they get closer to white box and they get ready to bring the ship out, it could, the sky's the limit. I mean, it's probably got the most earning potential just in terms of sheer money that you can earn with. It's got probably got the most potential of any ship that I know of in the game, uh, up, in, up including the, the, the Hall D and Hall E. Um, people might argue with that, but, you know, you got to lay out a lot of cash to fill up a Hall E. You're talking billions. <laughs> if you don't have billions to lay out, you can't make a dime off of it. You can take this ship out with a few friends and stay in it for a week or two and make billions if you want to, potentially. And how um, we're saying, yeah, like Space has just said, you know, you can make a few billion. Uh, you can stay in it for a week or so. Now, I don't think this would be like any other vessel that you would jump in where you'd like do a monotonous task and you just get bored of it after a while i think there would always be a, a particular learning curve to this vessel as well like i've gone over the some of the positions like an exothermic detector that might take a little while to get used to so going off the fact that you know this is going to be quite an advanced mining ship some of these positions may take some ability of training or getting used to the functions so you know as simple as it might be to swap between positions in the ship it might be easier to have someone do a, a particular task maybe take the ship out do some training on it and this is just hypothetically speaking but from the industry of mining it's going to be something that, you know, it's going to take someone to get used, a little while to get used to particular functions and working a particular um, part of a, a piece of machinery. And it's, there's literally positions in the world, real world popping up all the time for this sort of um, training ability. But again, it's a game, but Chris Roberts is going for very realistic features. Before someone serves on Orion, they need to have been on a prospector and an, at least at Argo, you know, have experienced mining before anyone boards. Yeah. yeah. I was only going to add while you were saying that it struck me. If you're looking for a profession in the game and you are uncertain what you want to do, but you like mining, make yourself an expert at all these positions on an Orion and you can probably work as much as you want and people will pay you what you're worth. Um, there's eight positions on this ship pilot yeah, everybody wants to fly but this is going to be a behemoth that is very very difficult to maneuver it's going to take a lot of finesse to fly this thing you're flying through asteroid fields you might have an asteroid blow up in your face I mean there's, it's going to take a good skilled pilot to get this ship moved around an asteroid field but it keep away from exploding asteroids <laughs> oh, exactly God. One of these positions is very, very specific and very, very specialized. Mm. And if you can get good at them, I think your earning potential is through the roof. It's a lot more money than taking chances doing combat or putting up money doing hauling or anything else. You can make a good living just spending, you know, some time on an Orion for sure. Yeah. So I would love to give you as much information on this ship as I can. What I've found is what I've got. There is no Q&A. There's no real updates on the the metrics on this ship that I can find. You know, because the YouTube page for Star Citizen doesn't really, um, like, name videos uh, accurately. So what I've found is what I know. 
it, and I'm trying to share it as much as I can. And a lot of this is, I would say, theory crafting. But again, you could use this in real world, like, well, practicalities and think about, you know, what we got at the moment. What could be reality later on? But again, if you are going to have one of these and you're going to refine the ore, I'm curious if it'll be just like what we do now where you go to the refinery, you you refine and process that ore and you can just go and leave the game and that ship will continue that process if it will be ever persisting or if it will just get put into storage. I'm not sure, but that's another question. Probably should. Good point, yeah. Mm. I don't see why it wouldn't. But it'd be, just be a... I'd like... It'd be good to have some more um, info on the Q&A. Maybe we could ask um, some questions on the spectrum forums but again we could very be... old concept <laughs> yeah. very old ship and it's on the back burner but we could be so far from this ship it's ridiculous and there's so mm. many more ways to make money in the game right now so you know take oh, with... well, but there there is one benefit to that uh as far as real world money it's the cheapest it's ever gonna be right now yeah absolutely and we yeah, always I, I wouldn't even put a price tag on this ship I'd be scared to say how far it could go, and I'd be far as I'd be scared to say if it'll go up at all for the next two three years. Who who knows? I don't expect that it will, just because of the sheer amount of work that's going to have to go into it. I just I don't see the ship coming out for a while. The number of systems that have to come in, the number of support back in tech, all that stuff that has to be in before the ship comes out. I don't think we're in any real danger of seeing a huge price spike, but. I could be wrong. <laughs> you just have to keep your eyes up. If you want one, I don't, yeah, I'd find a way to get one. I don't uh, think it's a huge priority for them right now. Yeah, I don't either. I'd, I'd find a way to get one, maybe through a CCU chain or something else, but I, I would definitely want to have it as an option, but I don't see the need. Like Merchant Man's example, I'm telling everybody that even thinks they want one, buy it at the earliest opportunity because the price is going to double at yeah. a minimum. And it's going to double next year. I, you, I predict that. Put it in writing somewhere. I said it. The price is going to double within a year. I promise you that. Maybe more than that. People have um, said about the bench man going up a hundred bucks at least this year. But again, we always oh specify that you know you can buy them in game. Uh, it is going to be something that you can achieve. But again, you know it's going to be something that's going to be quite maybe it's going to be probably going to be a lot of work to get there. So buying it with real money, I guess it depends on how much you are willing to invest into Star Citizen, how much you're putting into it. If you want to get one, melt it, and then, and then later get it back with your um, credits. It's up to you. But again, get it, get some of these ships before they go up in price because five, I think it's five hundred seventy-five dollars. It, yeah. it could jump so much from where it is. Like the Merchant Man, that could almost jump as well there's a lot of guarantees on ships jumping in price but you just got to have a look at the track record um on star citizen tools to actually see how often it jumps in price and what happens with that gradual increase there's, there's another benefit to just buying it right now is the loaner ships it's going to give you exactly. it already gives you a prospector and a mole so yeah. any other mining ship that's comes out that's going to be bigger it's going to give you yeah, and not only that, but I'm going to head off a couple of comments again. I'm going to catch them before we get them. A lot of people say in the comments, you know, you were just, we're just shields for CIG and we're selling ships and we're, no, we're not. We're, we're people who own these ships. We are people who have spent our own money and we're people who know based on that, how much we have saved or how much we have lost by waiting. So it comes from a position of experience. It's not, I'm not saying, hey, you have to go do this or you have to do that, do that. But there's one guy that's watching this video right now that's on the fence thinking, do I need to pick this up at this show? Buddy, this is for you. I'm not positive that you do. I don't think that the price will change. But with that said, I believe it could change some in the next year. So you got another couple of shows. But for somebody who absolutely knows for a fact that they want this ship and they're willing to pay for it with real cash, it's never too early because the prices are going to go up on the vast majority of the ships in this game. And if you want to save money, it's a wise thing to do. If you if you want to save money, we're not saying anybody has to do anything. We're just saying, based on our knowledge and based on what we know and our own experience, these prices are going to go up. If you want to save that price difference, yes, we're telling you now is the time to buy one. 
doesn't mean you have to. It doesn't mean that we're making anybody. We're not putting a gun in anybody's head. We're just presenting the information as we know it. That's exactly right. So, you know, we try to present you with as much information. And as we all know, as we know, you guys like the theory crafting, especially from when space jumps in with his theory crafting. Everyone loves space's theory crafting. We can never get enough of it. What's that? I said I love doing it. Oh man, just some of the theories you come up with, it's just, it's insane. And you're like, they're, what? They're out there. <laughs> yeah, they're out there, but it's just like, man. That's There's some things you tell me, and I'm just like, space, what are you smoking? But <laughs> hey, but now, right before we started recording this video, had you ever seen that picture of that other bad new ship? You, you ever... Okay, you got me on that one. I didn't, I didn't catch that one. It just looked like background coloring. Didn't know All right. It was. So we'll call that a deep dive. Like, comment, subscribe. I never say it. Space always does it. Do I'm going to say it again. <laughs> do, the, do the thing. Hit the button. Ring the bell. Press the button. Like it. Subscribe to it. Hit the Patreon up. Do whatever you can. Support Baron. He's too modest. We're trying to grow his channel. We can do this stuff full time. He's got a little baby girl we just saw on the camera a while ago. Um, he's got a lot of time commitment in his job and his family. He, he puts a lot of work in these videos for you guys. He, I, I watch him do it. I'm, he puts a lot of time in this stuff. He really does. So support him any way you can, please. But going from that, if you ever want to have a chat with us as well, we're always open on Discord. Sometimes it may get heated. <laughs> Because we're pretty passionate about some of our ships, but at the end of the day, um, it's always a good chat to talk to you guys. And you'll probably see us in general voice chat. Always jump in. Like, there's no, don't be scared. There's no, you know, we're not going to be like, oh, what are you doing in here? It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been Baron. I'll see you in the verse. Uh, that's been me, Lee. And I'm Spice Jesus. Peace, love, and chicken grease.